hey, this is Mikey. I've got a tutorial about noise and wiggle expressions, and it's really cool. It looks like this. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, I'll be speaking at Keyframes Conference again this year. It's in uh, November in Boston. I'll talk more about that after the tutorial. And lastly, I'm actually working from home this week because my wife is out of town, so I'm home watching the kids and things like that. So I'm here without my microphone and in the bedroom. All right, before we jump to this tutorial, I just wanted to uh, talk about we're using the wiggle expression to create all this. Now there's other ways of doing this using uh, shape layer repeaters and the, the wiggle noise or the wiggle transform built into that. Um, or if you're using just the noise expression, um, Joe over at Workbench has some great tutorials all talking about the noise expression and you can, I'll link to those below. Uh, but we're using the wiggle expression and it works a little bit differently and there's some uh, little differences to it. Anyways, so this is what we're making. It is kind of a wavy wiggly thing. And what's cool about this is it's all using just the wiggle expression and I'm linking them together in a way where they kind of mimic, mimic each other but not completely. And you're able to come in here and change the frequency and amplitude of the wiggle and also the scale of this noise. So. I've got this reverse right now, but if I have it down to like zero, then everything's going to be all one. If I have it say like 10, then it's going to be more like that. And you can slide in between. So let's kind of start um, explaining the wiggle expression. I know you know it, um, but let's talk about it and then kind of the steps that led me to figure this out. So first off here we have, a shape layer just with the wiggle on the position. Quick refresher, um, you have wiggle in parentheses, then you have the first one is the frequency, how many times it will wiggle per second, and the second one is the amplitude. Now there's other things going on behind the scene, which is the seed, there's a seed to this. And if you don't declare the seed, then it's just a, a new seed every time. So if I were to duplicate this, then those two just have their own randomness and there's no correlation between them. So if I go into this wiggle expression and above it, type seed random and then give it a value, then it doesn't look much different. But if I were to duplicate that, now they both have the same seed. In this case, it's zero. And you can see they are now using the exact same random, random pattern. Now here's where things get a little interesting is let's give this a different seed, this top one, let's say one, right? Now there's no real correlation between that. They're just kind of doing their own thing. Or you think they actually are somewhat correlated. It just, they're so far apart in their randomness that you can't really tell that they're the same. So if I were to come in here and put say, 0.25, then you can see there's a little bit more correlation. So when you go into these decimal numbers, you can see that there are a little bit more. Let's add a third one. You know what? Let's have four of them. All right. So zero, let's do this one point two five, that one's point five, and let's have this one be one. So they go a quarter of a thing each time. See how they are kind of correlated? Let's try even smaller jumps. Point one, point two. Three. All right, so that's the beginning of kind of how we did all this. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to make it so it would pick the random seed based off of the position in the composition. So if it was up in this corner versus down in that corner, it would be differently and you could create this kind of uh, noise look. So let's start with a new composition. Let's add to that quickly our background and let's make a shape. 
command option home will center that acre point and let's just align that <clears throat> all right now before we do anything we're going to want to um, add a controller to this so layer new null let's name that control null and to this we're going to add the sliders and things like that to control the wiggle because as we have you know say a hundred of these shapes in here we don't want to have to go into each one of them if we want to make a change so we're just going to link it all to the controller and it'll control all of them so on this let's add some expression controls and a slider freak amp and scale let's give those some values so frequency 2 amplitude 100 scale we'll put that on 2 as well okay let's start writing our expression and this will go on the position so just option click on that stopwatch and we're into the expression dialog box and first let's declare our variables so variable freak equals oh, let's uh, make sure those are up there that frequency slider variable amp equals the amplitude slider <clears throat> and variable scale equals that scale slider. Okay. So if we were to write our expression now, wiggle and then put frequency by amplitude, well then it would wiggle around like we had it before. But we wanted to make it so as we change the position of this, across the canvas it's going to have a different seed random so that it will create this kind of look okay so how we're going to do that is one let's give it a seed random and in here we're going to change the seed based off of the position of this layer. So we're going to use the linear expression. And what the linear expression is, is it remaps a set of a range of values to a new range of values. So what I want to remap is the range from position one, or up is the X position. As it goes, so we put that in, we link that in, we go comma, and as it goes from zero to 1920, I want that to go from zero to the scale that we have. And so in this case it'd be two because that's what the expression or the slider is set at. Now as we move this around, you can see we start this is working. If but here the quite the problem now is is we bring this into vertical movement and you can see they're still all lined up perfectly vertical that's because right now i only have it on that c controlled by the x value not the y value so what i want to do is i am going to create two different wiggles one for the x one for the y so variable x equals that wiggle let's just copy this and then we'll call this one variable y but instead of position 0 it's this second the y position which is position 1 and instead of 1920 we're going to switch that to 1080 now what we need to do is write out the x and y value so x we only want to grab the X of that and Y and grab the Y of that and see if this worked. And it didn't. And I'll tell you why here in a second. It's kind of working. It's really interesting because they're all lined up in rows and columns, but they're still, and what the issue is, 
is this seed is the exact same for the x and the y, and so that's why it's causing that. So what we want to do here is instead of having it go from 0 to scale, let's have it go from 10 to 10 plus scale. So it's just a different seed value. All right, so to mix things up again, um, I forgot there's one more step you have to do, and you have to invert the x and the y. Now you can see it's kind of just moving in that nice little wavy pattern. Let's change that scale up to five. Now what you can do is, it doesn't matter where these are on the canvas. You can see as I move them around, it just lines up where they need to be. Really kind of a cool thing. Mess around with that controller. Let's see what 10 looks like. We can bring the frequency down. Maybe bring that to three and the amplitude up to 200. Nice soft waves going on. Really, really cool. And it's all using the wiggle. So let's take a look at that expression again. Just so you can see what's going on. So first we are declaring the variables, the frequency, amplitude, and the scale. The scale is um, how big the waves look. <clears throat> and it's actually inverted. The, bigger, the higher number make a, a smaller wave. But that you can fix later. And then we declare a, a random seed for the x based off of x, you know, 0 to 1920. And then it goes from 0 to scale. And then the second random seed is for the y, and it's from 0 to 8, uh, 1080, and it goes from 10 to 10 plus scale. And then you have to invert the x and the y. You put the, the y in the x value and the x in the y value um, just... Otherwise, it'll it'll sync up and have columns and rows, and that's really it. And as you move this around, you can get this really cool wave pattern. And it's just all dependent on the position of each layer. So here's how to create your own kind of noise uh, wave system going on. And there's lots of cool things you can do. This you can even come in here and add this to say like a beam effect or something like that and have these all connected and make your own little plexus system. That's probably very complex, but you could do it. So before I end this tutorial, let's talk about the Keyframes Conference. Now the Keyframes Conference is produced by Future Media uh, Concepts and their conference division. And I wanna say they put on a great conference. Uh, they always have, I've been to quite a few of them. There's, it's really a good opportunity to meet and greet lots of people and really uh, dive deep into uh, lots of stuff, After Effects and motion graphics. So um, let's take a look at the program. I'm going to be one of the speakers at this, and there's lots of stuff going on. You know what, you might just go check out the, uh, the website, but you can see here video retouching and After Effects. I'm going to do some uh, beauty retouching and stuff like that. And then I've got another session uh, right here. Uh, graphic graphic asset rigging, uh, creating tools for distribution. So that's going to be talking a little bit about Mogerts and just rigging things up um, and stuff like that. But there's lots of cool people that are going to be here. Um, check it out. If you're in the Boston area in November, it's very much worth a go. If, uh, if you're still looking to spend some last-minute travel money for your business, um, highly recommend this. And uh, November 15th, so it's about six weeks away. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Please leave any comments and questions you have down below. If you have maybe even suggestions for other um, tutorial ideas or something with wiggle and noise to create this a little bit different. I'd love to hear them and I'd love to see what you come up with. Until next time, see ya.